Planet Tonight of St. Traps. Welcome back to the Idiot Brewery. I'm joined by my normal co host, the Grolin, Night next door, Saint Lolly, Trap. and Ashes of an Empire, or Ten Cans of Bushes Baked Beans, or the Fake Night or of St. Traps, whatever Saint you want to call them. The real Night uh, of St. Traps. Yeah, Trap. exactly. Uh, this is episode 13? Unlucky yeah. 13. Uh oh. Uh, it's gonna be a bad episode. It's gonna be a bad episode. Well, Strap to be fair, kids. we've already had right. twelve bad episodes, so maybe this menacing, is a good one. Menacing. Menacing. I'm gonna twelve die bad episodes end. times how many uh, bad decks? Jack dies at the end. Uh, is Jack that the name of the movie? <laughs> John dies at no, the it's end. Jack dies at the end, but the, the the tension is which Jack is gonna die. Yeah, First there you name go. Jack, last name dies at the end. I didn't know that this was the <laughs> Halloween episode. Spooky. 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 Hashtag too spooky. What, you, don't, you don't celebrate uh, Halloween yeah, right. in the middle of February? <laughs> it's I do February not. It's the 5th, beginning of February. You. Middle of February. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. This is going to be going up on, like, what is it going to be? Like, the 10th? The 10th, yeah. That's not the middle. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> I know we're salivating <laughs> who, to hear who would like deck. Who would like to jump into their deck first? I'll, I'll jump right in because, actually, that's my deck style. Now, do you like one mana unblockables? One oh, man wow. unblockables. We okay. Jack, you if like you're presenting Boggles, I'm going to smack you. <laughs> no. Boggles, Boggles don't have unblockable. They have hexproof. You can Invisible give them Stalker has unblockable. Well, fair. But do we like one man unblockables? Um, sure. No. As a rule, no. I mean, not really okay. because Thalia can't block them, so that's kind of annoying. Fair enough. Do you like tribal decks? I mean, I love tribal decks. I like a good tribal deck. Wait, are you are you presenting ninjas? No, 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 no. Because see, here's the here's the loop. Do you like zero mana flyers? Oh, okay. This is a, okay. Ornithopter, I assume. Okay, so this is ninjas. Ladies this and gentlemen, this is the worst ninja ever. You, we saw it from a mile away. May I to present be fair, to you? He did, he did talk about it before the podcast. I wasn't paying attention. To be fair, I had him muted. Oh, I said register right. alpha wasn't it. the right fit for my deck, and he mutes me. Oh, well, look anyway. at that. Weird. There was a blank space for <laughs> no reason there. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present Blue Black Ninjas for your modern amusement. So, I mean, amusement is definitely amused. the correct word. I'm I know what you're thinking. Amused. Jack, why are you running one man on blockables and Ornithopter of all cards, especially in modern? That barely saw play in standard. First off, how dare you Aiden run a standard deck with it, and it was amazing. Second. I did. I match up experiment into it twice, killing myself. <laughs> he sure did. Uh, that seems second. bad. Uh, Here's the reason. What? Oh yeah, that deck was hot. Anyways, why are, why am I running these unblockable creatures? Well, the main reason is that since we're playing ninjas, we're using an ability called ninjutsu. So ninjutsu is an alternative cost where you can pay it, Return an unblocked attacker you control to the hand, and then put that card into play from your hand tapped and attacking. Mm -hmm. So, you might be wondering, for the viewers at home, Jack, what are your unblockable creatures? Well, what are your unblockable creatures? Thank you, Aiden. They are fairly interchangeable. Right now, I've got four Triton Shore Stalkers for one blue mana. It's a 1-1. One, one. Merfolk Rogue can't be blocked. These are all um, the unblockable other... creatures for one mana. You don't need to tell us what they do. The other one drops a little more interesting. It's Vampire, Vampire. Cutthroat, <laughs> which is a one black, one one with lifelink and skulk. Uh, skulk means it can't be blocked by creatures with greater power. So most things are not blocking it. 99% of the time it's not getting blocked. The other one is Ornithopter, not unblockable. It's a 0-2 for 0 with flying. The reason we run that is because it is a turn one play that gives it flying, which attacking the next turn with flying in general is is probably something they're not going to block unless they're running spirits, in which case, oops. Can um, you give it haste? No, you cannot give it haste. Oh. Um, we've got a decent amount of ninja in this deck, believe it or not. Uh, we've got two Mistblade Shinobi, which is a 1-1 one, one for two and a blue, but you can ninjutsu it in for one blue. Um, when it deals combat damage to a player, you may return a target creature they control to their hand, so you can bounce something, which is pretty nice. Um, we've got Ninja of the Deep Hours, Popper All-Star here. It is three and a blue, two, two, but it has Ninjutsu one and a blue. And when it deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. Um, we've got Throat Slitter, which is four and a black, two, two, with Ninjutsu two and a black. Deals combat damage, destroy target non-black creature they control, so you can Doomblade something. We also run one Gurmag Angler, just five, five for six and a black with Delve, just as a one of, because it's fun. And it can sometimes get you out of some sticky situations. We run... Three Hagure the Ste the Still I almost said Steel the Still Wind, um it is three blue blue for three four it has Ninjutsu uh two and double blue it's 
a legendary human ninja. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may search your library for a ninja card, reveal it, and put it to your hand. And if you do, shuffle your library. You can also pay two to make target ninja creature unblockable this turn. It's quite a fun card. Nice. And last but not least for our ninja suite, we've got one Ink Eye Servant of Oni. Just as a one of. It's four double black. It's a five four. It's a legendary rat ninja. It's got ninjutsu three double black. When it when it deals combat damage to a player, you can put target creature card from that player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control, and you can pay one in a black to regenerate it. So those are pretty fun. We also run two Shadow Mage Infiltrators. Um, one three, one blue black. Human Wizards. Oh, Human Wizard. It's got fear. Can't be blocked except by creature artifact type. creatures and or black creatures, and when it deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. It's another way to get it unblockable, but it can also draw cards for you. In our removal suite, we've got four fatal pushes. No surprise there. We've got two dismembers. No surprise there either. Just a decent removal spell. Now, we've got something interesting. We run four familiars ruse, which is an instant for double blue. As an additional cost to cast it, you return a creature to your, owner, to your hand, and you counter a spell. So it's a counter spell, but you got to bounce a creature. You can really catch people off guard with that because, that well, people good. just aren't expecting counterspell out of ninjas. Bouncing Ornithopter seems good. Well, bouncing yeah, ninjas back to your hand is pretty solid. Bouncing ninjas back to your hand for more value or, as Aiden was saying, bouncing Ornithopter and then just replaying it the next turn for no mana is pretty nice. It's just counterspell. It's just counterspell with a 0-2 flyer so, you gotta bounce. You might be asking, Jack, how's the Tron matchup? Well, it's abysmal. But we do have some ways to try and stop it. It always is. We've got three Why dampings. Why do you keep asking that question? <laughs> I, I don't know. Why probably beat Tron? So TLC's the no Tron, Tron beat Tron. Tron. Yeah. yeah. True. We have three damping spheres in the sideboard. Uh, we also have two disdainful strokes. Uh, take that, all of Tron's wing cons. Unfortunately, they have more than two wing cons, so we're kind of in trouble there. Do they? Um, yeah, we also run one sorceress spyglass. Um, it can stop... Ugin, it can stop Karn, which can be some really, uh, it can be problematic for this deck. One thing I really like about this deck is that the way Ninjitsu works, it puts them onto the field, so they can't be countered when they're put onto the field. It's their own little, uh, they, they basically have Aether Vial built in to themselves, which is kind of cool. You can stifle it, right? Mm -hmm. You can stifle it, and let me tell you, I played against a guy that was playing Bounce Spell and Stifle Tribal. Oh my god. It was the worst. Was that match. <laughs> that match sounds, Abysmal. Like, yeah, that sounds pretty bad. Yeah, you it's know how the every worst matchup, you can't beat them. You literally you know, can't win. It's like you know how, how every... those people were playing uh, Isochron Scepter while you were playing uh, Pithing Needle Tribal, basically. Yeah. The <laughs> Mono Green Prison deck. That felt real bad for them. And they were just like, man, this guy just happened to be the one deck that this yeah. deck just can't beat. Everyone's got a comedically bad matchup. Other than that, in the sideboard, we've got two spell pierces and two counter squalls. Uh, counter squall, blue and a black counter non creature spell, and then they lose two. Um, Tard's very those. Good. Tard I is love pretty good. Um, it's you bring it in against things like control um, and other things that you might just want to counter. Um, counter squall particularly can be good against Titan Shift. Just straight up counter their uh, escape shift, and you get another turn. Um, we also run four surgicals because graveyard is everywhere. Um, but yeah, that's ninjas. The general plan is just ninjutsu them for value. Bounce them back to your hand. Try it again. I'll, I'll go next because I have something quick. Sure. sure. So I think I need to preface this sure. with the fact that I, have, I had this deck about an hour ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Jack, it's not you had an entire deck. week. <laughs> well, I, I spent that week trying to brew around Sages of the Anima. So, this is a Solemnity deck, but it's not a combo deck. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, this deck, like, because a lot of Solemnity decks, they rely on things like Phyrexian on life to try to just have, you, like, you can't die from damage. Instead of running Solemnity to just, like, go infinite or to have infinite life, you're running it for value. You run things like Lost Oromancers, cards that have Vanishing, because there's a lot of cards that say when they are put into the graveyard from play, if they had no time counters on it, do a thing. Yeah. So there's cards like, for example, Lost Oromancers, which has Vanishing 3, which means 
when you put it on when you play it it comes into play with three time counters on it at the beginning of your upkeep you remove a time counter from it and when the last time counter is removed you sacrifice it and is that the exact cards, wording is it when the last time counter is removed or when yes. the last has time no. so the the way that this works with solemnity is that they won't come in with counters at all that doesn't mean that they die immediately they just stick around but they, they still have that death clause for when when they do for the next die. upkeep um, or... No, no, no. At, so at the beginning of the upkeep, uh, the trigger for vanishing okay, would so that's happen, what I thought. but they don't but have, have any, any counters, counters on so nothing okay. happens. Okay, that's what I thought. I was yep. just checking. I was just checking the wording. Yep. Yeah. One but second. a sack outlet will like let you use lost yeah, ornaments to go get anything. Just like a uh, what you call it? What's the word? Academy rector deck. Yeah, you're right. It's, well, you're it's like it's like you it's like build your own academy rector. This or a seer. This or a yep. seer. It's just like a free sack outlet. And you also get um, just things like Deadly Grub, which is just so like a three in... mana, six one with hexproof. So you're in oh, uh, like sweet. Esper? It sounds like just white black. Or white black, or. Yeah. There's a lot of sweet. Uh, yeah, you oh, no. can run Esper if you want to run Chronozoa with a sack outlet, then you just go infinite. Well, yeah. You don't need the sack outlet, right? Um, yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. You don't. You're. You need oh, yeah, the sack outlet to put it in the graveyard. Yep. But, like, you just get all of these just, like, high-value creatures for not enough mana. And it's just, like, you can... If you have uh, Lost Oromancers, just put an Omniscience into play. If you have uh, Deadly Grub, have a 6-1 with Hexproof for 3 mana. If you have Chronozoa, get infinite Chronozoas! Look at all of these three threes with flying that you have. But yeah, I've, I, I'm not very prepared this week. And uh, this is what you get. All right. So we all know what just happened to the modern meta, right? I mean, KCI. KCI, KCI is gone. If we haven't mentioned it for the third week in a row, we have to. It's, we, KCI we have a quarter. Oh, is, is this what you're gone. presenting? Oh, my God. But KCI is not gone, okay? Oh, we revived oh it. God. We brought it Can back. Can we just say that this deck, this deck is sponsored by Sir Woodsy? Yeah, so uh, for the folks at home that uh, don't know Sir Woodsy personally, he challenged us to build a deck... Basically, we were talking about how KCI got banned, but the rest of the deck didn't. So yeah. let's build KCI list KCI, and Woodsy challenged us to do it. And I guess Aiden came up with the way to do it, so I he's did. gonna present okay. that. So you you've all seen this list, right? This deck is yeah, awful. I, yeah. What are you talking about? You loved it. Well, I mean, okay. yeah, but per, for uh, public posterity, I'm gonna say that I hate it. So. <laughs> all right. So this deck. <laughs> You can't run KCI, so you have to run three cards in its place. Which seems a little bad, but it can still go off turn four. If you're lucky. If you have the perfect draw. Okay, anyways. So, the three cards I'm talking about are, and you'll, you might remember these from a previous episode, where we have Basalt Sliver and Hivestone, which we used in the, in the Sage of Fables combo deck. But then you're asking yourself, but hey, then you'd have to run cr artifact creatures, and then the combo doesn't work, because you can't have Mox Opal, right? You can't loop Mox Opal. That's where you're wrong, kiddos. There is in a rare or something from some old set. For three and a blue, it's an enchantment. Each non-creature artifact is an artifact with power and toughness equal to its converted mana cost. Uh, so that turns all your all your artifacts into creatures, and then you can go infinite with Basal Sliver, Hivestone, and March in the Multitudes, just like KCI. It's just KCI. Ah, uh, Mirrodin. Known but, for its powerful enchantments. <sighs> but, but, uh, since we can't really run Ancient Stirrings as effectively as you normally could, I opted to go a different route for the Cantrips. I stuck in four Faithless Lootings because Faithless Lootings is a really good card. Um, but we're also playing port four painter servants for uh, for the four mausoleum secrets that we're running. So mausoleum secrets, which I've described in the uh, Gorio's toolbox list as well, is one in a black, at instant undergrowth. Search your library for a black card with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. And painter servant is. 
It's a two-drop uh, artifact creature, Scarecrow, relevant creature type. Uh, one, three. When it comes into play, choose a color. All cards that aren't in play, spells and permanents, are the chosen color in addition to their other colors. So basically, these two just say, search your library for any card uh, with CMC less than or equal to the number of creature cards in your in your graveyard and put it in your hand. And that's why I'm running Faithless Looting to put more creatures into the bin. And since we're running 10 creatures in this list instead of like three or whatever or five or whatever the other one was running, uh, it just works a little better. Uh, yeah, we did have to slim a couple artifacts, like just some of the uh, some of the random like cantrip artifacts. Uh, and we're also running, this is a sweet card, uh, we're running two Bantu's Monuments just for extra looping potential, I guess. Uh, so Bantu's Monument is a three drop uh, legendary artifact. Uh, black creature spells you control cost one less to cast, and whenever you cast a creature spell, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So we're actually playing this over Pyrite Spellbomb in this list, uh, just to like loop it whenever you cast a creature spell, which you do anyways with py with the Pyrite Spellbomb. That's that's KCI, but you forgot KCI was banned. Interesting. I like this. I mean, I what don't, are the odds that but... it actually ever kills your opponent? Uh, it can go off turn four, but most likely turn, like, six. <laughs> or seven. It kills you on turn four, like certain builds of Dredge can potentially kill you on turn two. Got a couple questions for you guys. Okay. Do you guys like decks that require six to seven cards to effectively go off? No. Hey, uh, do you like Splinter Twin? Do you like decks that die to a single card or single rest in peace? No. Yes. I play dredge. Do you hey, like, like decks? Do you like decks that cost less than twenty Mitgo tickets if you don't count the mana base? Jesus, that's Christ. a trap. <laughs> so uh, I have there's there's a card that I really really enjoy that I wanted to put into a deck and. It's not very good. Like, it's not an insane card by any means. Um, but it's just one of my favorite artworks. I love all of the mechanics behind it. I love the way the card sets up. And it's kind of it's kind of lame, but I really enjoy it. And that card is Memory's Journey. Uh, Memory's Journey is one in a blue instant. Target player shuffles up to three cards from his or her graveyard into his or her library. And then it has flashback for one green. I don't know why I like this card. I just always have. Especially from like the original Innistrad. Uh, I saw this card and I was like, man, this is really cool. I actually I actually have a couple foils of this card that I just like bought because I had found people like stores that had them or whatever, and I was like, Yeah, I want that, like randomly, even though it, it really isn't much of anything. But I wanted to build a deck around it, or at least involving it. And what I kinda came up to was there was a commander deck that I had played once that, uh, and by once I mean actually once, I built it. It cost me like $400. Uh, I put it together, I played one game with it, and I said, wow, I don't have any friends anymore. And then I took it apart and sold all the cards mm -hmm. because it didn't make my friends happy. Um, but essentially the whole idea of the deck was to put your whole deck, your whole library into your graveyard in the most fast, in like the quickest way possible, like one right away, you know, all at once. And then after doing so, use some sort of weird combo involving like Memory's Journey or, you know, any other number of things to win the game. And usually it meant winning with a Laboratory Maniac. So guest starring Laboratory Maniac this week, actually guest starring him. Uh, we, we are star. playing, we are playing Laboratory, Laboratory Maniac. Maniac. So the main combo for this deck is you need two things well technically you need three things in play you need a mesmeric orb and then two copies in any combination of fate stitcher or kiora's follower so kiora's follower is uh it's uh blue green it's a uh, i think it's a two two yeah it's a two two and it is tap untap another target permanent and then fate stitcher basically is the same thing it costs four and does the exact same thing um, but it has unearth for one blue, so you can bring it back from the graveyard for one blue, and then it has haste until end of turn. 
Mesmeric Orb states that whenever a permanent is untapped, its controller mills a card. So, this whole idea of this deck is to get these into play, put your entire deck into your graveyard. And you may think, well, why would you ever want to do that? Well, yeah, why would you ever want to do that? The basic combo here is that now you have a couple of cards in your graveyard. You have a Memory's Journey in case. So, Memory's Journey basically is in this deck to protect against. Uh, and it's the same as like Nauseous Revival. It runs a couple of Nauseous Revivals too. But Memory's Journey is basically to protect against Surgical Extraction. Or if they somehow stop your combo from going off, you can do this in response to um, hopefully be able to draw into the rest of your combo basically. Uh, just like putting it from your graveyard on top of your library so it's not exiled forever. But what you do is you have Unburial Rites in your graveyard now. So, uh, and Burial Rites just returns a creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. Doesn't matter what it is. Um, and it has flashback for three and a white. So you can, you can do this after it's been put into your graveyard. And you flashback Unburial Rites targeting Angel of Glory's Rise, which is a, a huge angel that costs way too much mana, and it's very hard to cast in this deck naturally. But when it, it's a flying 4-6, when it comes into play, exile all zombies... And then return all humans from your graveyard to the battlefield. So what you do in this instance is Angel comes into play. You bring back your uh, Laboratory Maniac because it's a human. And then you bring back a Zombie Lady of Scrolls, which is also a human. And you have no cards left in your library. So you tap one of them with the Zombie's ability to draw a card. And then you win with Laboratory Maniac. And you actually have two humans in play now. So if someone tries to like respond by killing your laboratory maniac, you can actually just tap the other one to draw another card and hopefully win in response to their kill spell. It's um again the deck is somewhat fragile, obviously. It requires a lot of moving pieces. Two removal spells. It dies to two removal spells like held up. It dies to uh good graveyard hate in the right spot, right? Like it's it's uh it dies to thought seize pretty quick. Um, that kind of thing, but you might think, well, these combo pieces, how do you, how are you effectively like drawing a bunch of them? Well, we also play four muddle the mixture, uh, which is, has probably one of my top three favorite mechanics of all time on it, which is uh, muddle the mixture is just blue, blue counter target, instant or sorcery. That's it. But it also has a, an ability called transmute. So you pay one blue blue and you discard it from your hand as a sorcery. Go get any card that costs two mana, exactly two mana, and put it into your hand. Um, and and it just kind of like lets you muddle the mixture, lets you tutor up both pieces of your of your combo because Mesmeric Orb and uh, Cure's Follower are both two mana, which is very very relevant as far as this goes. This combo actually can go off as early as turn three. Uh, it just requires basically the correct, you know, pieces. And the way that it does that is it, it plays um, four Utopia Sprawl, which is a one green enchantment you might see a lot of out of like Ponza. Uh, you have to attach it to a forest and then you choose a color. And then whenever you tap that land for mana, you add that color to your mana pool as well. And then it also plays Arbor Elf, which untaps forests. So you can effectively make about four mana off of them. Uh, and it kind of helps you ramp up. And the way that this sort of happens on turn four is because once you've put your entire graveyard into, or in your entire library into your graveyard, you now have four Fate Stitchers in your graveyard because the deck runs a full four. And you can tap that land, float whatever color and a blue get a fate stitcher into play, use it to untap the land and then do that a bunch so that you have four mana. And now you can cast unburial rights on angel and have the combo go off. So this, this is sort of what I would like to present to you guys is oops, all spells, but in modern, but you're running. I like this. I like, I've always been a fan of the like angel combo. Yeah. The, the angel of glory's rise combo. Sure. Yeah, I, my only question I have for you is, what do you do if you actually draw a combo piece? So, because you, it's very reliant on having it in the graveyard. I'm wondering if you have any way to bin cards from your hand or try to like shuffle them back into your library, or is it just like 
I drew this, and I guess I died. I drew this, and I'm dead. Well, the, the biggest... So, the thing there is that you actually have enough lands. Like, you aren't relying on just having two or three lands, right? You, you actually can rely on having a bunch of mana, especially with these dudes that just, like, randomly untap your lands, right? Um... You can cast these combo pieces if ever needed. Like, you can even cast an Angel of Glory's Rise. It's not impossible. In fact, you could probably do it on turn three or four. Um, and it it's not, like, easy, obviously, if you draw them, but you can definitely do it. The other thing is that the sideboard uh, contains two collective brutalities, and you have two more in the main. So... You have ways to discard cards if you ever need to, basically. All right. I, yeah. This deck actually seems super sweet. No, I, I, I really I really enjoy it. I think it's really cool. The, I don't know, it, the list is not perfect, and I knew that once I sort of presented this, I'd be, like, really upset with myself that it wasn't my favorite shell for Memory's Journey, but I don't know. This is a pretty sweet shell, so I, I really enjoy it. So that's been everything for our deck building portion of the podcast. We're going to jump into our fresh brews section, which is our second second segment of the day. Uh, so get... who would like to oh. give some cards to other people first? I, I got, uh, I got some on. dank tech. Before, before we get in here, can we have like a Batman tr- transition? No. Like, uh-uh. And then we'll go to... Nope. Why not? Not allowed. Why? No, it's too much effort. Yeah, it is too much effort. What do you mean? Oh. All right, I got like I got two some seconds. Tech. Sure. Okay. Okay. Who wants to go first? I I know Jack does. Uh... Hey Jack, <laughs> you want to go first? I usually go like third. So I go first. I, I can, never go first. I can go first if you want me to. All right, Jack. Build me a deck around Countryside Crusher. I refuse. Oh, I know exactly how this happens. Oh, this deck is easy to build. Yeah. Don't you worry about it. Don't you don't you worry your little head dog. Oh, this goes in the giant deck. I'm so glad that you didn't just go like, oh man, this just goes in that deck that, you know, played this forever in standard or whatever. I mean, hang on. At the beginning of your upkeep, reveal the top card of your library for sleep. He didn't even read the card. He just I didn't. I just saw it was a giant. So Countryside Crusher is a three three for one in double red. It's a giant warrior. It, that's creature Two type. It's not just big. Creature, creature types. types. Yes. And it reads, at the beginning of your upkeep, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land card, put it into your graveyard and repeat this process. Whenever a land card is put in your graveyard from anywhere, put a plus one, plus one counter on Countryside Crusher. Right. So, I call this deck uh, Four Countryside Crushers, 56 Mountains. Four Countryside Crushers? You think way too big. One Countryside <laughs> Crusher, 59 Mountains. Yeah, it just improves consistency. <laughs> Aiden. Okay. You like Porphyry Nodes, right? Ooh. Oh my god, Porphyry Nodes is a good card. Sweet card. Am I building around Drop of Honey? No, no, this is this is basically Porphyry Nodes, I promise. Mm. Okay. Build me a deck around Culling Scales. Oh, oh you know, this uh, card is bad. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. So, uh, I so love this it card, so much. Uh, I have a list. A list? He's got uh, a list. This, wow, he's this card... really on top of this Fresh Bruise today. <laughs> Yes. This card goes into my colorless mid-range list. Not Austin's. Not Austin's stupid one with Empire Tron or whatever. No, no, no. This one hey. runs a mixture of both artifacts and Eldrazi to, to, to form a perfect um, coexistence. One could say they were melded. All right. Austin. Mm-hmm. Build me a deck around Moon Ring Mirror. I actually think I've heard of this. Moonring Mirror is a five mana artifact from Kamigawa Block. Never mind, I have not heard of this card. <laughs> Whenever you draw a card, remove the top card of your library from the game face down. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may remove your hand from the game face down. If you do, put your, into your hand all other cards you own removed from the game with Moonring Mirror. So it's kind of like Memory Jar. It's kind of. basically Memory Jar, dude. Basically, memory jar. I got it. Okay. Oh, he's got it. So you're playing this in a deck full of things like harmless offering. So you give okay. you oh, give no. like this and paradox or not paradox haste. 
you, you give this to your opponent, and then you just, like, you play Fever Divisions and Howling Mine. Uh, and you're playing Moonring Mirror, which you donate to your opponent. And basically, their clock is just sped up so much more than yours. You know what deck this this uh, this you know what deck this deck has a really bad matchup with? What's that? Humans. Burn. No, because you're also boomerang all their lands. Like this just goes in Howling Mine. Right, but the thing is it's though, is that mine. they just so you boomerang their lands, right? And then they play a land and bolt you every turn. I think their clock is a little faster than yours. No, no, no. You play ley lines in the sideboard. It's fine. <laughs> exactly. You're so, you're, so you're just dedicated to losing game one and then winning game two and three off the bat. Okay, you put ley lines in the main board. Look, fellas, that's just how Mafia <laughs> we works. We fixed it. You wanna, that's just, you wanna that's play just that how game? Mafia fine. works. Put them in the main board. <laughs> Who would like to present cards next? Fine, I'll go, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm actually going to do something a little bit different this week. Um, oh, no. Oh, no. Different is never good. No, no, no. It's fine. Don't when worry about it. Have we ever done a different episode that actually turned out well? Don't the worry about special. it. It's the Christmas fine. fine. It's fine. Everything everything is fine. There's absolutely you, you're gonna You're going to see what I'm doing. You're going to see what I'm doing when I, when I start cool. this. So. Do, 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 do. Ogles Jack. No. I'm going to give you the easiest one. Thank God. Build me a deck. Around the mechanic exalted. Oh, Wait. No. Wait. Oh no. <laughs> I'm gonna open up Scryfall real quick. Over man. <laughs> See, I almost picked ninjutsu. It was on my list today. <laughs> uh, um. So <laughs> here's. For you. So like here's what ninja. you do. This goes in the Bogle's deck, because you're only swinging with Bogle, and then you just make him real exalted. No, I'm kidding. That's too easy. Um, <laughs> Bogle's, but instead of enchantments, you run every exalted. creature known to man. <laughs> <laughs> I like that a lot, actually. <laughs> Holy crap. I like that. Oh, that's good. Uh, I actually like I'll that a lot. I'll accept that as an answer if you want me to. Let's accept that. I'm going to build that. That seems hot. I like it. <laughs> He's building that. He's going to take it to F&M. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, Noble is too noble expensive. Yeah. All right. Hit me. Okay. Oh, you want this one? Do you want the hard one or do you want the Give me the hard one. one. The hard one? Give me the hard Are one. I want to sure? hear about the dumbest mechanic available in modern. Banding. That's not available in modern. Unfortunately. Red Jack? Yeah. Build me a deck. Around the mechanic soul shift. I know exactly what this does, and I love this mechanic. This mechanic is so bad. When this is put into a graveyard from play. You may return target spirit card with converted <laughs> mana cost blank or less from your graveyard to your hand. Hey, Austin. It's so bad. What? This is going to be a uh, Kamigawa block constructed, just so you know. <laughs> I love oh, you. <laughs> that, that's not how this works. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Mafia never worked like that before. That's funny. <laughs> Soul shift. Okay. You asked for the hard All one. Right. You I did, did I this, this to yourself. Myself. I brought this on myself, and I regret it immediately. You could play this mechanic in Vance Spirits. No. Here's what you do. You run it in Vance Spirits. But you run a one of Kodama of the Center Tree. Because Kodama no. of the Center Tree's power and toughness is equal to the number of spirits you control. It also has Soul Shift X, where X is the number of spirits you control. So it basically just reads okay, when this thing dies, get literally any spirit you want out of your graveyard. Okay, wait. Hold oh, on. They, killed, they, they killed your um, Spell Queller? Oh, get it back. It's fine. They killed your uh, Rattle Chains? Yeah, just take that back. It's fine. Okay. They killed on. your. They killed your uh, Geist of Saint Traft. Just you know, pull it out of your bin. It's fine. Aiden. Yeah. Build me a deck around the mechanic, Prowl. Oh, I think I know what that does. I know what this does. I love this mechanic. It's so bad, but I love it. Oh right. Whenever. You're... All right. So um. So I think this is already a deck. It's blue black rogues. And so you just play a whole bunch of like almost free or like really low to the ground like evasive threats that are rogues. Slitherblade. And you just yeah, like 
like Slitherblade or um, the the Cutthroat or whatever that we Vampire talked about Cutthroat. earlier. Vampire Cutthroat. Vampire uh, Cutthroat, which is also a rogue. Um, and then you just play like Earwig Squad, and you play the like uh, I don't even remember the other ones. I think there's an extra turn Prowl card. There's one. It makes uh, a bunch of fairy rogues, and then it gives oh, you an whatever. extra turn if you prowl it. Okay, yeah, but it costs six to prowl. Uh, but yeah, in this deck you also have a good cantrip, which is uh, Thief's Fortune, which is Tribal Instant Rogue, Prowl Blue, or else it's two and blue. Look at the top four cards of your library, put one in the hand and rest on the bottom, so it's kind of just impulse, but cost of one if you have Prowl. But then you also have like a Semi Lord and like Stink Drinker Bandit, which is uh, three and a black or Prowl one black for a two one. And whenever a rogue you control attacks and isn't blocked, it gets plus two plus one till end of turn. All right, all right, Jack. This one it'll be kind of tricky. Maybe. Build me a deck around Invasive Surgery. I know that card. I oh, that card. this card is. I played it in. I played it in five color huh. trade binder once. Is that the one where it's blue? Instant counter target Invasive sorcery surgery, spell. One blue for an instant. Yeah. Counter target sorcery spell. With delirium, if there are four more card types among cards in your graveyard, search the graveyard hand and library of that spell's controller so surgical, for so. any number of cards with the same name as that spell. Exile those cards. Then, sh then that player shuffles their library. So this is just like it goes in the delirium deck, like the Sultai delirium deck. If Scapeshift becomes like the number one deck to deal with in modern, yeah, if like Scapeshift become or if like um, taking turns suddenly becomes really good, right? You're just like, well, no, we're just gonna take all that from you. If there happens, to you be can a also lot just of really take all sorceries. your opponent's thought seasons. I mean, that seems not great or um, suboptimal, but or uh, like I mean, spikes. yeah, it could. It definitely goes in four color trade binder. I think it, it sure. I think sure. it goes. I think it goes pretty easily into like the sideboard of Sultai Delve if it's needed for the meta. It's one of those like really weird cards that if yeah, it needs is... to be needed for the meta. Yeah, it's very. It counter space card is it's very specific, so it's never really going to get main boarded. But it's definitely a sideboard card if that's what you're meant. It's like it ceremonious rejection. Seem, it actually doesn't seem awful against Phoenix. Like just getting rid of faith looting. That's not bad, that yeah, actually. A lot easier. It's not awful. So, yeah, right. maybe. I don't know. Seems like a very solid sideboard. Mm -hmm. Yeet is. A Aiden, I will give you the easier one. Why? Mm -hmm. Aiden, build me a deck around Horde of Notions. Okay. This is easy. You're right. Well, this goes in the elemental so deck. Horde it does. of Notions. It's loading. Oh, I literally had this on my list. Stop it. <laughs> I love Horde of Notions. I gotta find cheap. another card real quick. Uh, so Horde of Notions Got him. Is... Wow, sniped. You run it in the Chromanticore deck. It's a 5-5 it's nope. five five <laughs> for white, blue, black, red, green. Uh, legendary creature elemental. It goes in the elemental deck. Vigilance, Trample, Haste. And then you can pay white, blue, black, red, green. You may... You may play target elemental creature from your graveyard without paying its mana cost this turn. All right, let's go to Scryfall real quick. Take a look at uh, um, all I, the elementals. I would like to clarify something for you. What? Its second ability says you may play target elemental card from your graveyard, not elemental creature card. So all of the instants and sor yeah, you did. So all the instants and sorceries that have changeling can be cast or can be played with his five mana ability. There's not really any good ones though. Nameless okay. Inversion and Crib Swap are the best. They are just well, Nameless removal. Inversion Nameless Inversion has a five drop is a lot worse than a two drop, right? Right. And so is Crib Swap, except if you've got a bunch of mana, you can just do it every turn because it doesn't exile the card after it's done. Or or hold on, hold on. You play Doom Gape, right? So Doomgape, for Golgari, 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 uh, as hybrid mana, it's a 10-10 with Trample, Elemental. At the beginning of your upkeep, sack a creature, you gain life equal to that creature's toughness. You just sack it every turn to gain 10 life. I mean, sure, if you want to gain 10 life a bunch. Seems good against you, Burn. You can do, uh, that's actually fair. <laughs> Alright. Austin, 
I probably lied. This is probably easier because I can already think of three decks off the top of my head you could just slot sure. this into. But I feel like this is probably uh, a, a good card for you. It's very flavorful for you um, because it go it can slot Austin. in two decks you already have made. Um, Austin, build, build a deck a... around Thoughtseize. Yeah, thank you. Build me a deck around Cutting Lethamancer. I already know what this card does, and it's sweet. Cunning Lethamancer, two and a black human wizard. At the beginning of your upkeep, each player discards a card. It's a 2-2. Two -two. Um, well, this goes in 8-rack if yes. you don't own Liliana of the Veil. <laughs> you could also play it if you do run Liliana of the Veil. Yeah, that's true. It, it's also just like a decent sort of anti-control card in something like humans or wizards. Basically... Uh, like it if you were in, in, it goes in Magus Tribal. E, it doesn't because it's not a Magus. No, but, but it is a human wizard. And that's it looks true. Like it Magus. is a human wizard. Uh, it, this could go in like five color wizards, where if you're an aggro based deck or whatever, you're a lot of the time you're empty handed. So at the beginning of your upkeep, discarding a card that does nothing, but making your control opponent discard a card, that's pretty relevant. So that could seem pretty sweet, actually. That's what I would put it in. All right, um, Dredge Jack, build me a deck around, hold on. Do you like burn? I like burn. All right, build me a deck around Pyromancer Swath. Oh, this this deck is actually kind of cool. Uh, I've actually... Pyromancer Swath is two and a red for an enchantment that says, if an instant or sorcery you control would deal damage to a creature or player, it deals that much damage plus two to a permanent to a or player. player. Oh, to a creature or to a permanent or wow. it's it was oh. eroded to permanent it's eroded because of the because of planeswalkers yeah at the beginning of your each end step discard your hand each end step so each even your end opponent's step. end step yep okay so this card just says oh we're gonna go into top deck mode now but you run you run this i think in just you run this in burn the, because it, that's that's like, where that's a lot the, of people would put it, answer. right? I think that's wrong. Because burn your, I well, I think in burn, you're already in top deck mode. I I think this. But, you know, I think I also have another slightly sure. more on theme home for this. Is I think you can put this in dredge. Make conflagrate creeping better. Chill for five. You make and you, uh, yeah, you creep it. Your creeping chill gets way better. Well, uh, your conflagrate gets way better, and you have a way easier time putting stuff from your hand into your bin. This is actually something we that we talked about and mentioned a few weeks ago, where if you conflagrate and have like five different targets, Pyromancer Swath doesn't give you two extra damage to throw anywhere. It actually deals two damage extra to each of those to targets each. after yeah. you've done it. Right? Yes. I like that. So yeah, we did it. We got there. We did it. All right. Other Jack. Oh. 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 <laughs> Build oh, no. me a deck around Ulrich of the Crawling Horde. Oh, Jesus. I know this card. <laughs> I know this uh, card. I'm gonna go ahead and so I'm gonna go ahead and talk about. Um, oh, this does the Jun this, deck. I've I've mentioned this multiple times about doing the tribal tests and checking which tribes work and all that stuff. And uh, I'm currently working on Red Green Werewolves. This card does not go in Red Green Werewolves. I'm going to go ahead and well, stop obviously. everybody before they tell me to do that. Well, obviously, it, it, it goes does in not humans. go in that deck. Does not yeah, go into human. humans either. Tick Vial up to five. <laughs> does not go into humans. On honestly, I think this Ulrich of go... the Crawling Horde ah, yes. Uh, yes. is five mana and not good. Um, Three it's... red green. Yeah, <laughs> it's a four four. Uh, legendary creature, human werewolf. There's a lot of text in that little there box is. right there. Uh, whenever th whenever this creature enters the battlefield or transforms into Ulrich of the Crawling Horde, uh, target creature gets plus four plus four to land a turn. Like that's not bad, right? See, it's it's okay. Uh, at the beginning of each upkeep, if no spells were cast last turn, transform it, and then the transform side. As whenever this creature transforms into Ulrich un uncontested alpha, you may okay, have it in fight. I gotta, I gotta stop you for a second. It's Ulrich. Mm -hmm. It is Ulrich. Ulrich. 
Uh, Ulrich, uncontested alpha, you may have it fight target non-werewolf creature you don't control. So it's kind of just like, and it's a 6-6 six, six on the flip side. Uh, and then if you cast two or more spells, or if a player casts two or more spells, uh, you flip it. So it's basically just like, uh, I think this is one of the worst mythic rares thing. I've ever seen. I bet it's all play in standard. Uh, it was okay really. in standard. I played standard around then, and it didn't. Yeah, it, it wasn't much in standard. Jack, where are you putting Ulrich? Oh, I was going to put it in red green stompy. Seems decent. I mean, his I mean, ability yeah. is relevant there. All right, Austin, Austin, Austin. Oh, God, okay. Build me a deck around quenchable fire. So. Oh, this card. I actually know this card. So, three in a red sorcery. Deal three damage to target player. And then it deals an additional three damage to that player at the beginning of your next upkeep step unless he or she pays blue before that step. Before that step, so when? Yeah, they can they can pay blue whenever they want to. Well, yeah, but what if you pay it during the upkeep step? What if you do it while the trigger is on the stack? Is it a trigger? Do you do that? Does it trigger? So to, to the rules blue? the rules here are: after quench, quenchable fire resolves, the targeted player becomes able to perform a special action of paying blue. This action may be performed at any time the player has priority, and it doesn't use the stack. It may be performed only once and only before your next upkeep begins. If the player has performed the action by then, the deal an additional 3 damage ability won't trigger. Otherwise, it will. If it triggers, the player can't stop it by paying blue. But once the trigger goes on the stack, it's it's over. They get the 3 damage. Aha. So, I think this this card, what I would do is I'd play this in a deck that's like, it's not mono red burn. But like it totally could be, I guess. It's just like bad burn. You play this in cards that quote continue to burn. So all of the enchantments and artifacts that deal damage to each player every turn. You play um, obviously Quenchable Fire because it's a card that bolts your opponent, but then also bolts them again if they can't pay the the cost of putting the fire out, quote unquote. There's also an uh, elemental from Zendikar called Obsidian Fireheart, which is one red, 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 or one red, 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 four, four, uh, one red, red, put a blaze counter on a land without a blaze counter on it. And for as long as it has a blaze counter on it, it has at the beginning of your upkeep, uh, this land deals one damage to you. This card has the best reminder text in all of magic because the reminder text says, the land continues to burn after Obsidian Fireheart has left the battlefield. So, you basically play things like Obsidian Fireheart. Uh, you play Blood Moon to make so that they can't play Quenchable Fire stuff. You play Quenchable Fire. Uh, you play all of the enchantments. Um, I know that Sulfuric Vortex isn't legal in Modern, but I'm sure there's some other, there's some other enchantments that do it in Modern, so... Uh, and you just basically, hopefully, burn the entire world down before your opponent kills you. Yeah, that's so uh, I guess that's I guess that's everything. Make sure to uh, like, comment, and subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. Uh, we'd love to see and, your um, comments we'll and read your comments on our on our uh, videos to give us fresh brew ideas, all that kind of stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. If you want to, linked below our video. Um, we have a tapped out account that links all of our deck lists, or at least it links all the deck lists that people have sent to me. Uh, so as soon as they send those links to me or those deck lists to me, I get it up on tapped out as soon as I can, as well as we now have a second platform for our podcast on Castbox. So, uh, if you want to go check us out there, the link is also in our YouTube, um, com or, uh, description below. So you can go ahead and check those out if you want to. Uh, outside and of if that, you're listening to us on Castbox. Hi. Yeah. Thanks for using Castbox. Castbox is we sweet, actually. It. I've been I've been using Castbox recently, and I really enjoy it. Like the the layout and everything is awesome. Um, Hashtag not sponsored. Not by sponsored Castbox. by Castbox, but Castbox. Well, we, if we you're out there, we were sponsored. We could be. We, we wish we, we could were be. because then we would actually be making money from this podcast. That's true. That'd be awesome. <laughs> making rather um, than just screaming out into the void. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's that's been the idiot brewery for this week, that's and been the idiot just a couple of things. Right. Just a couple of things to Copyright say before the end of it. Brewery. Don't push your bird off a cliff. Don't smack your grandma. And we're going to see you sure all next Saturday at noon. Okay, I want... Have I a want good one, guys, everybody. If, if you can hear me, please 
Just call the police. He has us in the basement. Professionals, don't worry about it.